Hey guys, if you've ever tried learning OpenGL, you have without doubt run into some issue with nothing showing up or malformed output or just what the fuck am I looking at? Well, when you're just starting off any language framework or library, you're bound to run into issues at the start. OpenGL is no different and it is quite a hard API to debug if you have no idea what you're doing. So in this video, I'd like to outline a few ways that you can go about debugging OpenGL. I'm going to split this video into four different sections. The first one will be about the debug context. Second one will be about render talk. The third one will be for specifics for a few cases. And the fourth one will be about asking questions online. Now this is a very big tip that not many people know about, unfortunately. If your GPU supports OpenGL version 4.3, you have access to something called a debug context. If your GPU doesn't support 4.3, you should check the supported extensions for OpenGL for khr underscore debug and enable that in context creation. If you have 4.3 supported and are using glfw, you can use this to enable the debug context. The debug context by itself does nothing, but once you have enabled it, you can add something called a debug callback. You can enable it through gl enable gl debug output. Then provide a function to act as a callback to the gl debug message callback function. The zero here is a point pointer to any arbitrary data that you want to pass to the callback. So if you pa want to pass something like a custom logger, you can pass it through pointer here. The callback must have this as its bridge type. In the callback, you can just print the error that you get. The debug callback will print a few of the errors that can happen while writing OpenGL code. For example, passing some invalid enum to a function that doesn't expect it. Read more about the debug callback in context here since I've left out a lot in this video. RenderDoc is an external tool that you can use to debug OpenGL in a more methodical way. It's one of the best ways to debug OpenGL in my opinion. You can install it from here. Once it's installed, you can open it up. Firstly, navigate to the Launch Application tab. Here you can select a program that you want to debug. If your project is in a compiled language, this should be easy to add. If your language is interpreted though, something like Java, you should select the virtual machine executable here instead. I'll quickly go over Java here. Go to your JRE directory into bin and select java.exe. This by itself won't work. You'll have to provide additional arguments here. For Java, it will be dash jar and then the path to a jar file. For this to work, your jar file must have a working manifest. So make sure you have that. You can easily Google how to make that work. Now that you have selected the EXE, click on Launch. As it says up here, press F12 or Print Screen to capture a frame. Make sure you are on a core profile too. The compatibility profile context will not work well with RenderDoc. After capturing a frame, you can simply close your program and RenderDoc will automatically load the frame that you captured. On the left here, in the event browser, you can see all of the major OpenGL calls that edit any frame buffer, that is, the screen, or if you're writing to a texture or something. Clicking on one of these will show the minor OpenGL calls before the major one. This is very handy just to check if you're calling everything in the right order. When you see a frame, the first thing you should do is check down here. Clicking here opens a new tab called Errors and Warnings which can help a lot if you're simply misjudging some small line. For example, here I tried to run GL draw arrays without any shader bound and I got yelled at by errors and warnings. Along with being able to view the entire timeline of the frame, we can see what OpenGL functions have been called with respect to certain OpenGL objects. Navigate to the resource inspector. On the right here, we have a list of all the OpenGL objects currently alive. As you see, I have two shaders, one shader program, one vertex array along with the default one, one buffer, and a load of these back buffer things. 
the back buffer is just the screen. So if I double click here and view contents, I'll see what was being drawn to the screen on the frame that was captured. If I click on any of these objects here, for example, the vertex array, I can see all of the OpenGL calls done when it was being initialized with all the parameters used. The vertex array is just a template, so we can't view its contents. But if I open up this buffer and click view contents, we'll see the data that it held during the frame that we captured. This data may not make sense easily, so we can provide a format for it. For example, I know that my vertex array holds two vector twos, one float and a vector four, so I can format the buffer to give us a more readable view. And boom, we can inspect what data got sent to the GPU. One last feature I'd like to show you here is the pipeline state. Here up top, you can see the different parts of the OpenGL pipeline. Now click on vertex input and then click on draw call I issued here, then click on the mesh view. Now I can see what my vertices look like and all the data associated here as well. I can also see the GL position value that was output by the vertex shader per vertex input. All in all, RenderDoc is a very useful program to check for certain things like call order or malform data and lots more. I obviously can't cover it all in one video, so we'll move on. Now let's get into some specific cases that can come up. First of all, where do you begin if you see nothing on the screen? Chances are the debug callback has reported some error in this case, but if not, here's a checklist on what you should take a look at. First thing, vertex attributes. Check the stride, offsets and sizes of all the attributes and make sure that you've enabled them. Next thing, check the correct order of operations. Don't clear the screen after drawing stuff to it. Also check if the right stuff is bound at the correct time. If you're using modern OpenGL, that is direct state access, you wouldn't need to worry about this. RenderDoc will help you check this quite easily. Number three, check the buffer data. Check it via RenderDoc like I showed before, using the view context button. And make sure that the geo position isn't going out of the range minus one to one in both X and Y using the mesh view. Number four, texture errors. If you're using textures and you see nothing, there could be a lot of things wrong here. First of all, make sure you've bound your texture to a certain slot and the ID of the same slot has been uploaded to a shader. If these are different, the shader may be trying to sample from a null texture. If not, check your UV coordinates in the shader. I'll expand on this later. If you're getting a texture that is almost right, Check the format and internal format of your texture. In general, make sure the data you're providing to GL text image 2D and the specification of the texture matches up. You don't want to be uploading an unsigned interray and asking it to be interpreted as unsigned byte or something. Also make sure that the number of channels of the texture being loaded match with the internal format and format of the texture. The fifth and final thing to check here are shader errors. Make sure there are no compilation or linking errors using GL get error and printing them if you get any. Also make sure the shader is actually bound during your draw call. RenderDoc will warn you if that is not the case. Here are a few general tips for some common issues. Before you guarantee that there is nothing rendering, change the background clear color to something different or check the alpha value of the output pixel if you have blending enabled. Maybe the pixel is being written out, but the color is the same as the background, or maybe the alpha value is zero. Debugging shaders isn't as easy as just booting up a debugger and going step by step. There are some tools that allow this, but they are GPU specific, so they don't really help everyone. So this tip should help out in fragment shaders and even vertex shaders. If you want to inspect the value of a certain variable, output it as the color of a fragment. For example, here I wanted to check whether the UVs I got in the fragment shader were right. So I convert this vec2 into a vec4 and output it. You can see that I get this gradient. I know 00, 0 corresponds to black and 11 1 corresponds to yellow since I use the red and green channels. So I know that my UVs are fine. 
This can be done with any variable. Just make sure to remap the range of the variable to 0 to 1 from whatever it was before, because the output of the fragment shader expects the same. First thing to do when asking questions is to try to figure out what is wrong yourself. From my experience, finding bugs in your own code is far more satisfying than other people pointing them out. And once you do find a bug, chances are you'll never make the same mistake again. Once you've tried everything that you can think of and maybe possibly not found the bug, the right way to ask a question is something like this. Say what you're using, which language. Say what you're doing and what you're supposed to be seeing. Say what you're actually seeing instead. Then say what you've tried. It seems obvious to say this after the entire video, but questions like I don't see anything, what's wrong, are unfortunately not enough to pinpoint a problem because literally half of the errors at the start cause blank windows. This is clearly not a full list of errors that can happen. That would be pretty much impossible, but I've tried to cover many of the common cases that I see on Discord. I hope these tips, especially RenderDoc and the debug context, help you find errors that you're stuck on. On that note, see you next time.